Hello, Internet. It's Kudo again. I did say that I would be doing a gameplay video of either Mega Man Legends or Dissidia. And since we're going to be doing a Final Fantasy game pretty soon, Final Fantasy Type-0 for anybody who doesn't know, I figured doing Dissidia would be pretty perfect since it is a Final Fantasy fighting game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, go through a really quick warm-up match. Just to show you guys a little bit about what's going to go on here, because it's a little boring if you don't actually know what's going on. But the fights, if you know what's going on, are actually pretty fun to watch. So I figure that'll make this a little less tedious than your average RPG, I guess you could say. Um, uh, first thing I'll do is go over the story a little bit for anybody who doesn't know about Dissidia. Um, if you know anything about the Final Fantasy universe, then it pretty much takes place within all of the planes of the Final Fantasy universe all together. Um, the story of Dissidia goes something like this. Okay, there are two gods. Chaos, the god of discord, and Cosmos, the goddess of harmony. It's kind of the classic light versus dark thing, but the gods don't actually battle each other. Each of them summons warriors to represent them from different planes of time and universes, and give their chosen warriors their powers to do battle with one another. When a warrior dies, they go to sleep, and their god must give them a piece of their power in order to revive them for the next match. Being revived in this way also causes memory loss on the fighter, and after a few revives, the fighter's memories of home start to fade too. When one side is out of living fighters, the god, choose, uh, the god loses the match, or in this game they're also called cycles. Um, this game starts on the 12th cycle, and it's implied that at one point every Final Fantasy character was a fighter in this war. But over the cycles, weaker members got weeded out, and so far we're left with just a handful of members on both sides. Uh, it's also implied that Chaos has been winning the matches consecutively and Cosmos is just about out of power from having to revive her fighters. Um, the game stars six protagonists. Um, the six protagonists pretty much got split off from the main ten. And yeah, um, this game is a prologue to the first Dissidia. I forgot to say we are doing the second Dissidia game. But the cool thing is, if you beat the story mode in this game, you actually unlock the other story mode. So yeah, if everything goes well, if this seems like something some people are interested in, we'll actually do both campaigns. Right now I'm just going to uh, try to get through the first campaign and then we'll see what happens. So right here you'll see there are a few equips. This is kind of the game's RPG element. Um, you get equips that give you different stats towards things like uh, you could have a character focused on critical strikes, so on and so forth. Defense, attack, luck, and so on. Uh, one cool thing is you can actually choose your battle music before you go into a match. Um, I never really do because the stages normally have really good music, but we'll go with One Winged Angel, because that's pretty popular. Um, accessories, so on and so forth. It's pretty much like your basic RPG, but the battle system, if you've never seen it before, is nothing like a regular RPG, and let's get into it now. So you're a true warrior. One thing I don't know if you've noticed, but um, characters also have specific openings depending on who they're fighting. The movement in the system is very fluid, very open. This isn't your typical fighting game at all. Um, you'll notice there are a lot of things everywhere, and there are also these yellow arrows that pop up when I get near, uh, next to ledges or next to walls. <laughs> I'm trying to show movement here, and I'm kind of getting the crap kicked out of me. Okay, well that didn't go very well. Um, there are two kinds of attacks in this game, bravery attacks and HP attacks. Uh, you'll notice a number above our HP bars, that is our bravery. Um, when you land a bravery attack, it adds whatever your attack power is to your bravery and takes the same amount from your opponent. So you can actually get quite the distance between the two of you if you play correctly. Okay, so there are also HP attacks, which he's going to use right there. <laughs> and the HP attacks 
will subtract whatever your bravery is directly from your opponent's HP. Um, I was actually kind of hoping he'd have more bravery here. Let's see if we can get him to attack us a couple more times. Okay, you see how his number is now purple? That means he now has enough bravery to execute one final HP attack and finish me off for good. Like I said before, the movement in this game is incredibly fluid. It's one of the things I really like a lot. Um, this is surprisingly a very skill-based game, and the matches, like I said before, are a lot of fun to watch. So, we're just gonna go ahead and fight him a little bit here. See if I can get kind of back into the swing of things. This game also introduced assists. Um, you assign one assist character to you at the beginning of a match and you can summon the assist to come and either deliver one HP attack or one bravery attack. HP attacks require two bars, while bravery attacks only require one. You'll also notice that there are these little, like, spirit orbs floating around me. Oh, uh, we're gonna die. So the spirit orbs, if you collect them, your purple bar on the side grows, and as it's growing, you actually get more bonuses, and you can, um, once it fills up all the way, you can go into kind of a super form. Every character has their own version of the super form. Some of them equip their ultimate weapon that you might have seen from the games. Some of them go into a trance form like Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VI, and some of them just power up and go into a new job. So yeah, I know it looks like I kind of suck at this game, and I might because I haven't played this game in forever, but I am going to be using an account that has maxed out characters. Um, this isn't necessarily for me. I, I don't want to go through the game and like just be uber god at it, just win all of my matches. It's because the higher level you are, the more attacks you have unlocked. And if I go with a regular level one character, I'm only really going to have one attack. And that's going to get really boring really fast, because it's just going to be how quickly can I land that one attack over and over again. So we're going to go into customization here. I know that you start with lightning. So what we're going to do is adjust my level, which is another feature. Um, I can keep all of my attacks, but I can actually just play at a lower level so that my stats aren't really overpowered. I think the line for this is 2. And I'll have it re-equip me right there. Perfect. Most of the equip stuff doesn't matter for regular play in the story mode because most of the time it gives you options anyway. What do I need? Oh, sorry. Okay, story mode CPU strength. Um, we're gonna set this to strong. Uh, the little list down there is kind of deceptive because you would think that moderate is actually the strongest, but moderate is actually the weakest, strong is the strongest. Um, as much as I suck at this game, I don't think I suck so much that I won't be able to get through the story mode on strong. If I lose a battle too many times, or if a battle is just getting way too boring to watch, I'll obviously cut it and you'll never even know that it happened. So here we are. Uh, we're gonna go with chapter prologue obviously to start out chapter zero bonus line is two yes um if you stay at the bonus line then it'll give you bonuses for beating the game on the bonus line because this is an account that has everything unlocked that's not going to matter at all the reason we're going to go on the bonus line is because that is probably the recommended level and the most interesting to enter in so that's what we're gonna go with. You'll have to forgive me, I haven't had a drink in forever. I probably should have had something to drink before I started this. So let's get started. We've wasted like 18 minutes or something. The divine conflict between harmony and discord rages on. The fate of the world, its promised prize. Fighting to secure it, our brave souls summoned for that solitary purpose. Champions, cut from a cloth different from those which form the fabric of our world. These warriors from afar are helpless but to do as bid, waging battle after endless battle for the gods who call them here, granted neither respite nor reprieve.
relying on what fragments of their shattered memories remain. They fight to end the conflict and for a chance to return home to the worlds they each once knew. What they cannot know is that they fight in vain. This war is one without end, and it is their fate to serve forever until at last their ebbing strength gives way. Hey, uh, Tifa? You figure they all made it to Cosmos by now? Hmm, I guess they could have. You must be tired, huh? Of course I am. Laguna led us down the scenic road. I don't know what you were thinking. Yeah, I, uh, could have sworn this was the quick route. Guess not. Yeah, guess not. Well, it can't really be that much farther from here, can it? I think I've seen this place before. Right? See there? Yuna knows what's up. We went a little out of our way, but we're still on track. No need to complain. Yuna, you ought to let him know what you really think. It's for his own good. Lightning. Time to stop sulking. Who's sulking? <laughs> Had Laguna not taken charge, we might well never have made it this far. Perhaps his words were mostly false, but even so, they moved us, and that's why we're here. I know that. Thanks for the refresher. Kane. Hmm? Cosmos called us again. Why do you suppose that is? Who knows? I want... I intend to win this fight. I win, and I get my memory back. I get to go back home. I keep telling myself that, just like everyone else. But you know, now that I've been here a while, sometimes I have to wonder if winning really means we'll get to go back home at all. If it might be that winning won't change a thing. I just... I can't help but wonder. What's this? Is it really possible our lightning's as human as the rest of us? What? Look, we've all got our worries, but we're trying to do what we can. Are you gonna lead us now? Or are you leaving that up to me? Anything but that. <laughs> Don't sweat it. We'll figure something out. Long as we stay alive, things are bound to work out, right? I trust our once wayward guide. He speaks from experience. Thanks? Shall we then? Relax. Our battle will not be ended so easily. No, that it won't. Alrighty. So, um, judge it as you will. A lot of people don't really like this game, especially the story. Um, most people will agree that the gameplay is pretty fun, but a lot of people say that they don't like the story, the voice acting, so on and so forth. I actually think it's pretty great, personally. <laughs> I really don't care. Um, I don't judge this game very harshly. It's a fun game to play, and I think it's really fun watching the Final Fantasy characters interact with each other, because I'm a Final Fantasy fan. If you're not a Final Fantasy fan, I think there's still some joy to be had. All the people that don't play Final Fantasy that play this game that I know seem to enjoy it pretty well. Um, those things that I'm attacking are spirits. It's not really said where the spirits come from, but if you hit enough of them, they actually give you this thing called the chain, and the chain allows you to go through multiple fights at one time. Uh, it looks like this account has some already, so I don't really need to collect them. These gates are what we're trying to get to. Um, my time here on the overworld is going to be super duper short. It's kind of neat that they have an overworld because this makes it look kind of more Final Fantasy-ish. Um, I think we all remember playing like Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and 9 and just trekking across 
this kind of plane. It's a really nice touch. Um, this entire game is fan service, and it's beautiful, glorious fan service. It's our favorite Final Fantasy characters fighting against each other and all kinds of little touches. Um, I'll get to show you some in just a second. I'm playing this on an emulator in case anybody's curious. One thing that's kind of cool about this emulator is the loading times are almost non-existent. These gateways are where you do most of your fighting. It doesn't look like this first gateway has any enemies, which is kind of sad because I feel like this play is getting quite boring quite fast. The way you get to the end of each um, gateway, as it is, is you have to fight your way through until you can get to this symbol right here. This is called the Stigma of Chaos, and by getting to it and breaking it, you beat the level. If it's not a Stigma of Chaos, and it's actually like... We've arrived. The others must be here already. Let's go. Hope they didn't get tired of waiting. A little distance can be good for a relationship, you know? <laughs> Let's hope they see it that way. Come on. Ah, so sorry about that. So. Um, that's the prologue. There actually wasn't any action there whatsoever, which is super disappointing. I might cut this, actually, since nothing actually happened. No, I guess I won't cut it, because I kind of explained the rules a bit. Um, if it's not a stigma of chaos, and it's an actual, like, full-blown 3D modeled, like, figure of chaos, then, um, it'll actually spark a fight. And that's what we were looking for there, but that totally didn't happen. I think I'm gonna cut it right there. Uh, I know this episode was probably pretty boring because there really wasn't any action besides me getting my butt kicked, but I kind of wanted to explain this game to anybody who doesn't know anything about it because I feel like knowing the rules and knowing how I'm either gonna win or lose is how a lot of people will enjoy this because if you don't know what's going on then you don't know whether what I'm doing is good or not. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and cut it right there. I'll start chapter one next episode. Thanks for sticking with me. Kudo out.